Hey everyone, this is Chris and Sandy Bent with the Chris and Sandy Show. We get up close and personal with some amazing guests throughout the entertainment industry. And today, as I see on every episode, we got a great one for you. Who do we have? We have actress and writer Jessica Morris with us today. She is best known for her role as Jennifer Rappaport on One Life to Live. She will be starring as Martha in the movie Danger in the Spotlight, which will premiere on the Lifetime Movie Network August 27th. And she is also starring in A Mother's Tear, which will premiere on Lifetime also this and year. We're excited to have her on. So yes. Welcome to the show. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to talk to you. It's I'll definitely our here. pleasure. Um, as you know, everybody's going through this crazy COVIDness, and oh, it affects yes. everybody different. So yes. I always like to start out and talk about that first. How has it affected what you do, and what have you done to maneuver through it? You know, um, when the pandemic first hit, it definitely, um, you know, it kind of first slowed down and then ultimately stopped the industry. So, you know, it kind of forced everyone to to take things a little slower and, and kind of take time with their families and, you know, take time for themselves. And, you know, even though it's been a very tragic time for a lot of people, I think there are, there is some good that's come out. Um, I took more time to do some writing, um, which, you know, after things opened back up, I got um, my first script I ever wrote got produced because I had put some time into that. And I have some other mm -hmm. writing um, jobs that are in development right now. So it was nice yeah. kind of to have a minute to step back and, and be able to work on some other parts of myself. Yeah, that's like with us. You know, we launched this show January of 2020 and a couple months before COVID. And we thought, you know what, we'll do 100 interviews first year, great foundation, then COVID happens. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, this may be our silver lining um, because a brand new show will probably get bigger guests than it normally would because mm -hmm. everybody needs to talk. So we <laughs> just went all out. <laughs> and because of that, we've done over, uh, over 430 interviews since January of 2020. Oh, wow. So it's, yeah, I, you know, I so can see how that would really open things up because so many people, you know, are available now. Yes. Oh, yeah, and, that's and, sitting at home and, and wanting to talk, wanting to connect. Mm -hmm. And the great thing that's is so it, it solidified our show where now we can get people like you and other people that ha have all these starring roles. And so it's been really cool. Yes, that's great. That's <laughs> so awesome. Good for you. when did you know, you know, a lot of people ask, when did you know you want to you wanted to act, but I like to go deeper that. When did it click that that could be a career choice for you? There are a couple different moments. I mean, I would say the first moment I had where I was like, okay, I'm good at this and I like this was probably, um, it was one of the first plays I did in school when I was in junior high. And um, I was a very shy girl, very shy. Like I, oh, wow. the teachers were like, she's a really good student, but we're a little worried because she barely talks. Uh -huh. So that yeah, thing. that was me too. Yeah. So then the first time I got on stage and I was playing a very confident character, everyone was just like, Jessica, where did that come <laughs> from? Like, I don't know oh, when I was playing someone else, I just, it gave me this kind of outlet. ability to express yeah. myself and it, yeah, it gave me, it allowed me to kind of just come out of my shell. Um, oh, so wow. that was the first moment. And then after that, the second moment was probably, um, when I was 16, I went to Japan for the summer. I got hooked up with a modeling agency there. And, you know, I, I really didn't care for modeling that much. I mean, uh, but I did my first um, professional acting job while I was there. It was a, a, a cracker commercial. Wow. <laughs> and, oh, wow. Yeah. And that day on set, it was just, I was like, okay, this is, this is so much better. This is more my speed. I had a wow. blast. I got paid more money than <laughs> That's always good. Am I always. doing the other stuff, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then the third one, really just like after, after I graduated and I was trying to figure, I was, you know, doing a little college and trying to figure out what I wanted to do with my life. And, you know, I wasn't that happy where I was and nothing was really clicking. And um, one of my friends at the time, she was just like, Jessica, the only thing you've ever enjoyed doing is acting. Wow. Why, why don't you? you go to LA, go, go to, go to Hollywood, go to Los Angeles. And I was like, you know what? That's a brilliant idea. <laughs> so I just saved up a little bit of money. And a couple months later I packed up my car and I drove from Florida to California and just started my life. Well, it's funny about that. Talking about the only thing you ever liked, you know, when we look back on our past, we've been married almost 19 years and oh, wow. I'm like, um, the only thing I've ever liked to do is talk. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, I've been in thousands of conversations in the years since we've been yeah. married, and sometimes she'd get upset because we she, she knows we get two three minutes in we're there 30 40 50 minutes yes, <laughs> and, and now we look back and say, okay well this makes sense now <laughs> yes this was your calling <laughs> yes <laughs> <laughs> so what are some hobbies you like to do outside of acting i like doing yoga because that kind of relaxes my mind and you know feels good to stretch your body and everything um you know, I like to go on hikes and be out in nature. I like to hang out with friends and um, watch movies. Yeah, I mean, pretty basic stuff, I guess. You know, I just, but mainly I like to, being in nature is the thing that makes me the happiest. So whenever I have a chance to do that, I like to do that. I love that. Now, as, as you know, a lot of people, they see the glory behind like you and Brad Pitt and Angelina Jolie and all the other big mm -hmm. actors. But they don't see the grind, the sacrifice, the tears, the struggles it takes not just to get to y'all's level, but even a career level within entertainment. I always want to talk about that because I think that it's one of the most glossed over things there is. Everybody oh, thinks, oh, I have the talent. I can make it. Oh, yeah. but we both know it's way more than that. Timing is everything work ethic is everything. So let's talk about that. Some of the sacrifices and struggles you've had to go through to get to where you are today. Oh yeah. People don't really talk about that enough. And sometimes actors are a little embarrassed to talk about, you know, when they have side jobs or something like that, but you know, unless you're a, a series that continues on and on, you know, or unless you're making <laughs> like a Angelina Jolie, size, <laughs> you know, you know, right. paycheck on a movie you're doing, then you have to have something to survive in between. And that's not even the advice that I give actors that are starting out is, you know, don't look that, at that as a negative thing. You know, yeah. look at it as like, find something that you don't mind doing. Because if you have, if you're able to pay your bills comfortably and you have enough money to survive, then you're not as desperate when you go into your auditions. It's not as frustrating, yeah. you know, because you, ha you have to be able to like feed yourself. And, mm -hmm. and so anyway, yeah, that, that's part of the struggle is I mean, over the years, years i've had so many different random side jobs that you would never know i mean there was a, there at one point i was you know i was i did the waiting tables thing i was terrible mm -hmm. at that i dropped so many drinks <laughs> and um i mean i've been in the situation where i've been serving people their food and they were asking me for my autograph because of a show oh, wow. that they'd seen me on oh, you wow. know it's just been so many kind of really strange ir ironic moments like that um yeah because they just and people don't see, yeah, they don't see that side of it. Um, mm -hmm. I worked as a valet driver. It's like the valet girls company where you park cars. And I didn't even know how to drive stick at that point. So <laughs> oh, well. that was interesting. Yeah. <laughs> You know, that's like with us, you know, as we're building this brand of the Chris and Sandy show, you know, in the evenings to stay so that we can be flexible, we do delivery of food to yeah, people's houses. food delivery. Oh, that's so a great idea. Cool. Yeah. It's flexible. Because yeah, it's flexible. It's we can work fun. around schedule. Yeah. Now, the great thing about that is all through COVID, we didn't have to get shut down because what did people do? Oh, that was busier than ever. Oh, that was busier than ever. Yeah, that's a great that's idea. Good. So because of that, we've been good on that. But again, we've had to do that. And just so many different things we try to do to stay afloat while we mm -hmm. build this. But yeah, a lot of people don't realize that they think that, you know, when they see you on a screen, you're making it just like an artist. All of a sudden they see right. someone get a hundred thousand spins on their Spotify and they think, Oh, you've got it made. And, they're, and they're, they're, they just don't know. Right. Yeah. They don't see that you're waking up and maybe like driving to an office to do a job. And then in between you're running home to like shoot an audition. And then the yeah. next day you have to be on set early. And then after that, like in between in your trailer, you're like doing other work, <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah, they don't see all that, but it's, it's all part of it. And, you know, it's, it, it builds character. Let's I remember when it. Tyler Perry tells his story that he talks about so many times he'd get a job and it, he would feel the call to go do his show. So he would have, he said he's had to quit 20, 30 jobs because Oh, you're not getting off. You just started work. <laughs> oh, definitely. I've, I've gotten fired from a few jobs because of that, because I all of a sudden would, you know, book a film. And there's a lot of actors in LA that, you know, they take a job and they say they're an actor, but when they say that, they mean they, they don't really, a lot of actors, you know, unfortunately it's hard to get work. So yeah. a lot of people yeah. say, yes, I'm an actor, but then they don't actually need time off. But when you, say that but then yeah you've been working there a month and all of a sudden you're like oh i need to leave for a month to do this film 
they're like, yeah, no, that's not going to work. <laughs> <laughs> so what's been your toughest um, role to play? My toughest role? That's a good question. You know, the, I don't know if any of them have been like the toughest. I think I'm still kind of searching for that role that's really going to push me out of my comfort zone. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, I'm kind of like still, that's in my future. But I mean, the last couple Lifetime movies I did were very emotionally challenging. Um, the one that's about to come out and then the one that I shot right mm -hmm. after that, A Mother's Terror, that should be airing soon too. So tell us about very, those two. Oh yeah, um, so Danger in the Spotlight. My character goes through um, so much. I mean, the movie starts and she's already, her, her life has already kind of spiraled out of control. Um, oh, wow. Her son oh, wow. died and then she became um, a really bad alcoholic and lost her job as a nurse at the hospital. Um, she lost her husband. She's lost custody mm -hmm. of um, mm -hmm. her daughter. And so, um, but then she's been a year sober. And the night before the custody hearing of her daughter, she blacks out and wakes up and there's been an accident and it appears that she's been drinking, but she doesn't remember drinking. And the other oh, woman, yeah. the woman in the other car is unconscious but she decides, even though it's the wrong thing, she decides to flee the scene of the crime because yeah. she doesn't want to jeopardize losing her daughter the next morning. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, wow. so it's just like a really, it's just a lot that she goes through. And then she realizes that the woman in the other car is a professional ballet dancer who's now paralyzed. And so um, she seeks her out to try to find answers, but becomes her at-home caretaker. Um, um, so that was... That was a challenging role. And then the one after that, A Mother's Terror, um, my character as a child um, had been abducted for many years from her parents, um, mm -hmm. like seven years or something like that, if I'm getting it correct. Mm -hmm. And um, now she's you know, obviously grown up and um, the man who abducted her is getting out of prison around the same time as her, the, her book about it is, is coming oh, wow. out. He's getting published. Oh, wow. And then she has a daughter who goes missing so of course she assumes it must be him yeah, there's some twists yeah. and turns along the way but yeah that character was really interesting too because the dynamic with me and the character the actor who played the man who abducted me um it was sort of like a bit of stockholm syndrome like he, he wasn't abusive yeah, to me he was yeah. a father figure mm -hmm. to me yeah. so i loved him and and missed him and worried mm -hmm. about him in prison all of this but at the same time he ruined my life so yeah, that was a weird, kind of cool thing to play that I'd never played before. Oh wow! So, what's been your most fun role to play? <laughs> My most so what's fun been role to play has been. Um, I think my most fun role was in Role Models because oh, when wow. I worked with David Wayne, that director is oh, just yeah. like so amazing and brilliant comedically and he threw out so many um improv lines you know he was wanting just, just like you know ad lib yeah. and he just threw out these crazy off the wall lines i can't even remember what they are now but <laughs> it was just such a, a fun light-hearted energetic set that i enjoy that a lot i love that so when you look at your career so far you know we talked about the sacrifice side let's flip the script and go the other way what are a few moments where you're like wow i got to do that wow moments you know when i just recently worked on the upshaws on netflix um you know working on that and like wanda sykes you know is one of the stars and one of the producers and so i worked you know with her she gave me some you know notes and kind of directed me a little bit and right. i just admire her so much and i've always thought she's hilarious so I, was, I was very ner I was very nervous that day. I was just like sweating all over. You know, I was like, oh my God, I can't believe I have this opportunity. I can't screw this up. <laughs> so yeah, that was one of those moments. So as you know, a lot of people, they see you as the actress and other people that are actors and actresses and artists, but they don't see the teams behind y'all. And in our opinion, the teams mm -hmm. never get the love they deserve. They don't. But on our show, they do. So if you want to take a few moments, tell us about the team that helps you be who you are. So I met my manager, Deborah Lynn Finden, um, 
very early in my career, basically about a year after I moved out to California, I met her and she became my manager and she's been my manager the, my, you know, entire career. And she's just like my, the older sister I never had, you know, like she's my biggest cheerleader. She, Hmm. she's been with me through so many ups and downs and, you know, any moment that I'm having, you know, doubts about anything, she calls me and is like, and just, you know, pumps me up. And she just, she's, unwavering belief in me so that's that's incredible um i've got my publicist jessica cat yep oh, she's yes. awesome we love her um so set this interview up and she's amazing and she's done so much to help me out uh, i'm grateful for her and um yeah there have been many people that just stuck by me for for a long time and i i don't take that for granted for one second you know, speaking of teens, we have a third co-host, our little nine-year-old that we let yeah. that we let ask like three questions. So Sandy's gonna go get him real quick. I will get him. Uh, and we've got a two-year-old daughter okay. that when she gets older, she'll be plugged into the show too, because <laughs> we are family affair. Oh, awesome! <laughs> oh, that's <laughs> so, so great. Cool. I love that. Yeah, I guess it should be called the Benton Family Show. <laughs> 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 but yeah, we try to include. Um, at least him in right now, but when she gets older, she'll be definitely in too. Mm -hmm. I I can't imagine not doing it. I mean, he's been in almost every episode and all that. So while we're waiting on him, um, what what is a a moment where you were auditioning and it didn't go as planned? You know, people love to hear those stories too. Yes. Well, when I remember, and this is when I first got started, this was years ago, mm-hmm. I was auditioning actually for, oh, hi. <laughs> hi, Jessica. How are you? I'm doing great. So what's your favorite food? <laughs> My favorite food is, it's a tie between sushi and pizza. Ooh, because what's yours? Mine is pizza. Oh, yep. You can't go wrong with pizza, right? Yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, what's your favorite TV show? Right now, I would say what is my favorite? I like The Handmaid's Tale. It's a little dark, but it's good. What about you? <laughs> Mine is SpongeBob. <laughs> That's great. I haven't seen yeah. it. I have to be honest. Maybe I can check it out. <laughs> well, it's been pretty cool because he watches a lot of Nick Nickelodeon and Disney. Um, show. So we've been able to bring on quite a bit of people from his shows on our show, too. Oh, that's fun. Nothing yes. really cool to meet them. Yes. <laughs> so what's your favorite movie? <laughs> do, do you want to meet my cat? Ah, look, cat. Ooh, look. Oh. <laughs> yes. That's pretty. Mm. Yes. <laughs> yes. She wanted to yes. say hi to you. Yeah. <laughs> hi. <laughs> okay, so what's your favorite movie? What was your question? What's your favorite movie? My favorite movie. I mean, one one of my favorite movies of all time would be um, Forrest Gump. Oh wow! That's I could watch that one, one over and over again. Yeah. <laughs> and yours? Mine is the Minions movie. You? Which one? Uh, uh the Minions movie. Oh, the Minions movie. Okay. Yes. I haven't seen that either. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. And they got a really great brand. I mean, I tell you, kids love them. I mean, we love, I mean, Sandy and I love them. So. (laughs) Yeah. I like how they make those movies where they're like, they're great for all. Bye. Nice to meet you. Where they're great for like all, you know, everyone in the family. Yeah. That's what's great. Now you were telling a moment Um, while ago about, um, one of the moments that happened. Oh, the interview, the audition story. Yes. So when I was younger, I auditioned for the um, the role in Gilmore Girls of the daughter. Mm-hmm. And you know how on that show they talk very quickly. Yeah. It's mm-hmm. just the yeah. cadence in that show is very you know fast. So um, when I went in for that audition, I was off book and I like I, I was memorized. I knew the lines, but. And I was so new to acting at the time. I was so young that I think I just let my nerves get to me. So the nerves combined with the very fast paced speech of the dialogue. I got so tripped up and I just got, I got tongue tied. And then, you know, if that were to happen to me today, after the experience that I have, I would have just taken a minute and been like, I'm going to start again, you know, 
but at the time yeah. I was just, I was so, I didn't know what to do and so I got up and then I was just ah, finished the scene really insecure and and I just kind of ran out of the room and oh, then wow. I got my car and started crying <laughs> yeah <laughs> oh <laughs> And, but uh, the cool thing is it's a learning moment, moment. the character building moment. Of. Yes. Yeah, it was a learning lesson for me. <laughs> that was bad. So <laughs> if you could co-star with any actor or actress, who would it be and what role would you want to play? Hmm. There's so many actors I'd like to work with. Um, I mean, I would definitely like because it's my favorite show. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> so to work with her, the lead actress, um, would be great. I'd love to work with Jessica Chastain. Oh, wow. um, oh, yeah. Many years ago, we were actually up for the same role in a, in a movie called Jolene. And yeah. I think yeah. she's so great. And I'm so glad for her success. And I'd love to work with her because I think she's a really talented actress. Um, yeah, but, I mean, there's it, the list could go on and on, you know, with people that I would like to work with. And there's probably multiple shows for this, but just think of the first thing that pops in here. But what's a show that you wish you were in? Well, the one I mentioned. Yeah, I would love to be in that show. Um, you know, I, I really like, there's a new show right now that I just checked out on Hulu called Nine Perfect Strangers. Oh, um, I've heard Nicole, of that. Like, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I love Nicole Kidman, too. She's pretty good in that. Um, a show like that would be really fun to be on. Yeah. To play a character that's like there to get therapy, who has like some problems, but is trying to get her life back together. Mm -hmm. That'd be great. So where do you want to be in five years? You know, I'm, I'm working on writing my like dream scripts, my dream series. I, you know, work on that and to develop oh, wow. a little bit. And um, once I develop that, I'd like to, you know, pitch it and sell it and be the, one of the leads in that show. Uh, so that's kind of where I, I would see myself with my career. Yes. Oh, wow. Uh, what are some sources of inspiration for you? My inspiration is mainly just trying to live my life to the fullest and doing what I love to do every day. You know, there's certain times where, you, like you talked about, you have to do survival jobs or you have to do things yeah. um, to get by. But, you know, I, I try to. I'm just inspired to try to do as little of like things that I don't like and then <laughs> do more of things that fulfill me because life is too short. And, you know, so that's, that's basically what inspires me is just to have a life that has meaning and, and passion and, and a purpose. Because who wants yes. to get on their deathbed and look back and have nothing but regrets. That's one reason why we're doing the show exactly. is, is, you know, you know, we got to the point with the show where we're like, we couldn't quit even if we wanted to, because we would always wonder where could we have gone? Yes. But yeah. Right. Yeah. You don't want to have regrets. I mean, it's better to try and, you know, I guess fail, if you want to call it that. Yes. Try and like not get to where you want to, you know, get to mm -hmm. rather than to not try at all. You know, I'd, I'd rather live my life going after the things that I want, even if I don't get to where I'm going. Just that journey is is a life well lived to me. Exactly. Absolutely. And what would you like your legacy to be as an actress? What would you like to be most known and remembered for? You know, I, I try to always like um, bring out a part of myself in every role that I play. So I hope that people see that and I'd like to, you know, touch people with my work in some way. Like, um, yeah, I just, I try to put my whole heart into it and I, I just, hope that people feel that and because my you know purpose is to express myself in that way so I hope that that translates you know and yes. that other people um, feel that absolutely and uh, if you could relay any message to your fans and followers what would you want to say to them just you know thank you for the support I you know Ever since I, you know, got my start on the soap, I feel like there have been people who've just, you know, followed my career and watched every movie I've done, and even if it's like just a small indie film or anything like that. And I'm just in awe of that, you know, that people care about my career and care about, you know, seeing me succeed and, you know, seeing everything that I put out. And I just, I just want to say thank you for that. I really, 
it means so much to me. I love that. Now let's look a little further down the road and, you know, 15 years, 20 years down the road and you're a success on a grand scale, whatever that looks like for you, you're there. If the person you are today could meet her, your future successful self, what would you want to remind her? Is meeting me now. That you're meeting your successful self. You froze a little bit. So who's <laughs> is it my future self who's giving me advice or my now self? Sorry. Your now self. Your, your now self is, is giving her my now self. Okay. Is giving her advice. Just um, you know, enjoy every second of, of what you're experiencing right now because you know, good they're all fleeting. Everything is temporary. So I guess if I'm talking to myself, who's having the career and the success and the life that I want at that moment, I would say just, yeah, just enjoy and embrace every single moment because, because you don't know how long it's going to last for, you know, not to be negative, but yeah. it's just every, you know, yeah. there's cycles yeah. in life and everything goes like this. And so when it's bad, you just hang on and when it's good. You've just got to like enjoy every single second of that. And see, I always go to flip the script on that type of question. Because everybody asks, what would you tell your past self? But I like to ask it in that way because to get guests to think about what would they want to remind their successful self? Because, again, as you grow, you know, there's going to be things that come at you. And I think now is the time to mm -hmm. kind of think about that. Yeah, I like I like that you flip that around. You know, I would also, I guess, tell that future self to remain, you know, humble and, and everything too, because sometimes I think when people get very successful, they can get caught up in that, in their own hype, you know, mm -hmm. and it, it kind of, um, to the detriment of their character, of, of, of who they are, they forget where they came mm -hmm. from, all that. So yeah, that's another thing I, I guess I would tell that self, just to remember where you came from, you know, even if everyone's telling you you're this amazing person, like you're not any different than anyone else. They just mm -hmm. admire your work, you know, I yeah. think. Yeah. As long as you can stay grounded in that way, I think that's good. Love that. <laughs> so let's say you had a friend of yours and they've done some acting gigs, but on a small scale, um, but they know they've been called to this. They just, you know, they've gotten that little stage bug and they just know. So what advice would you give that specific person in this day and time to kind of help guide them the next couple of years? I would definitely give them the advice of what I mentioned earlier that, you know, find a skill or something that you don't mind doing. Um, it's not like you're having a plan B. It's just that, you know, it takes yeah. time to grow a career. Yes, there are rare cases that come out to LA or that jump into business and get on a hit show right away. That does happen, but it's very rare. So I think it's smart to have something maybe so you don't have to wait tables or do a, a job that you feel is maybe beneath you or that, you know, you're just yeah. bad at or you're, mm -hmm. makes you miserable. You know, have, have a skill, have something, you know, where you can like be OK for a while. And then if you book an acting job, it's like, oh, bonus. My life is going where it needs to go. But but I was still OK before this job. You know, I wasn't just desperate yeah. for it. And I would also say don't get caught up in this. You know, sometimes it's important to network and go out as an actor, but if you get mm -hmm. too caught up in that, so going out and drinking too much and, you know, that could end up um, <coughs> distracting you from your focus of why you're even doing what you're doing. Sometimes you have to say no <laughs> to an invite to go out for drinks and stay home and maybe work on a character or memorize lines or, you know, do some writing and you've got to be okay with that. But it's, even though it's fun, it can be really, really exciting and everything. It's, it's also, it is a job. And it can That's destroy your life. Like I went through 19 years of addictions until almost 14 years ago. And the first five years of oh, our wow. marriage was really hectic on her because of those addictions. But she loved me through them. And here we are, you know, almost 19 oh, years married. Yeah. I've been sober almost 14 years. So. Congratulations. Oh, that's such a beautiful story, too. That's so nice of you to, like, stand by him through through those trials and tribulations. That's yeah. true love. Well, yeah, I, you know, I, not only would I probably not be alive if she didn't, but we definitely would, wouldn't be married now and we wouldn't have our nine year old and two year old. So, you know, again, That's you know, true. she had the faith in me that she believed that the change was coming, that God was going to heal me in some way. And here we are today. So That's beautiful. 
<laughs> so as we come to a close here, yeah. um, tell everybody how they can find you. You can't find me. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> on social media, um, Instagram, Jessica Morris01. Um, Twitter, Jessica A. Morris. Facebook, just Jessica Morris. And um, yeah, and you can catch me there and you can catch my movie on Friday nights, 8, 7 Central. I'm looking forward yeah, to that. that. We definitely yeah. look forward to that. And, you know, we really enjoyed having you on the show mm -hmm. today, and we look forward to having you back down the road. Hopefully we'll have a better connection. <laughs> yes. That would be great. It was wonderful talking to you both. Same, Same here. here. We enjoyed Good it. <laughs> Thanks so much for your Bye. time.